Well, first of all, thank you guys for joining me. I, you, I imagine you're super busy, so this is much appreciated. Uh, if you don't mind, if you could go one more time and, and give me your names and then your roles at OpenAI. Yeah, my name is Bill Peebles. I'm a lead on Sora uh, here at OpenAI. My name is Tim Brooks. I'm also a research lead on Sora. Uh, I'm Aditya. I lead the Sora team. Awesome. Okay, so I've reacted to Sora. I saw <laughs> I saw the, the announcement and the website and uh, all those prompts and example videos that it made that you guys gave. And it was super impressive. Can you give me like a super concise breakdown of how exactly it works because we've explained dolly before and and diffusion before how does sora make videos yeah so at a high level sora is a generative model so there's been a lot of very cool generative models over the past few years ranging from language models like the gpt family to image generation models like dolly uh, sora is a video generation model and what that means is it looks at a lot of video data and learns to generate photorealistic videos. Uh, the exact way it does that kind of draws techniques actually both from diffusion-based models like DALI as well as LLMs, uh, like the GPT family. It's kind of like somewhere in between. It's trained like DALI, um, but architecturally, it looks more like the GPT family. But at a high level, it's just trained to generate videos uh, of the real world and of digital worlds and of all kinds of content. And uh, it, it creates a, a huge variety of stuff, kind of the same way the other models do, based on what it's trained on. What is Sora trained on? So we can't go into much detail on it, but it's trained on a combination of data that's publicly available as well as data that OpenAI has licensed. One uh, innovation that we had in creating Sora was enabling it to train on videos at different durations as well as different aspect ratios and resolutions. And this is something that's really new. So previously, when you train an image or video generation model, people would typically train them at a very fixed size, like only one resolution, for example. But what we do is we take images as well as videos of all you know wide aspect ratios, tall, long videos, short videos, high resolution, low resolution, and we turn them all into these small pieces we call patches. And then we're able to train on videos with different numbers of patches depending on the size of the input. And that allows our model to be really versatile, to train on a wider variety of data, and also to be used to generate content at different resolutions and sizes. And so you guys have you've had access to using it, building it, developing it for some time now. And obviously there's a, maybe not obviously, but there's a ton of variables with video. Like I make videos. I know there's lighting, reflections, you know, all kinds of physics and moving objects and things involved. What have you found that Sora in its current state is good at? And maybe there are things that are specifically weaknesses. Like I'll show the video that I asked for in a second where there's, six fingers on one of the hands, but what, what have you seen our, our particular strengths and weaknesses of like what it's making? Yeah, so it definitely excels at like photorealism is a big step forward in general. And the fact that the videos can be so long, up to a minute long, is really a leap from what was previously possible. But some things it still struggles with, I mean, hands in general is a, are a pain point, as you mentioned, but also some aspects of physics. And like in, in one of the examples that you asked for with the 3D printer, you can see it doesn't quite get that right. And also, if you ask for a really specific, for example, like camera trajectory over time, it has trouble doing that. So some aspects of physics and of the motion or trajectories that happen over time it struggles with. It's really interesting to see the stuff it does well, because like you said, there are those examples of like really good photorealism with like lighting and reflections and even close ups and textures. And just like Dolly, you can give it styles like shot in 35 millimeter film or, or shot, you know, like from a DSLR with a blurry background. Um, there are no sounds in these videos, though. I'm super curious if it would be a gigantic extra lift to add sound to these or if it's more complicated than I'm realizing. Um, how far does it feel like you are from being able to also have AI generated sound in an AI generated video? It's hard to give exact timelines with these kinds of things. Uh, sure. For Sora 1, we were really focused on pushing the capabilities of video generation models forward because before this, you know, a lot of AI generated video was like, four seconds of pretty low frame rate, and the quality wasn't great. 
So that's where a lot of our effort so far has been. Uh, we definitely agree, though, that you know, adding in these other kinds of uh, content would be would make like videos way more immersive. So it's something that we're definitely thinking about. But right now, Sora is mainly just a video generation model, and we've been focused on pushing the capabilities there in that domain. For sure. So, okay, Dolly has improved a lot over time. It's gotten better. It's improved in a lot of ways. And you guys are constantly developing and working towards making Sora better. How do you, first of all, how do you get to the point where you've gotten good enough with it that you know it's ready to share with the world and we have this mic drop mm -hmm. moment? And then how do you know how to keep moving forward and, and making things that it's better at? So a big motivation for us, really the motivation for why we wanted to get Sora out in this like blog post form, but it's not yet ready, is to get feedback to understand how this could be useful to people, also what safety work needs to be done. And this will really set our research roadmap moving forward. So it's not currently a product. It's not available in ChatGPT or anything, and we don't even have any current timelines for when we would turn this into a product. But really right now we're in the like feedback getting stage. So we want to, you know, we'll definitely be improving it, but how we should improve it is kind of a, an open question. And we wanted to show the world this technology that's on the horizon and start hearing from people about how could this be useful to you, hear from safety experts, how could we make this safe for the world, start hearing from some artists, how could this be useful in your workflows? And that's really going to set our agenda moving forward. So what have you heard so far? Yeah, like one piece of feedback we've definitely heard is that people are interested in having more detailed controls. So that will be an interesting direction moving forward. Whereas right now it's about, you know, you have this maybe kind of short prompt, um, but people are really interested in having more control over exactly the content that's generated. So that's definitely one thing we'll be looking into. Interesting. Yeah, I can imagine just wanting to just make sure it's widescreen or just make sure it's vertical or it's well lit or something like that, just to not have to worry about prompt engineering, I guess. Um, okay, so I guess, Aditya, if you've, you've been working on this stuff for a long time, is there a future where you can generate a video that is English indistinguishable from a normal video. Because that's how, that's how it feels like Dolly has evolved over time, where you can ask for a photorealistic picture and it, it can make that. Um, is that something you could imagine actually being possible? I guess it's probably a yes, because we've seen it do so much already. Yeah, eventually I think it's going to be possible. Um, but of course, uh, as we approach that point, we want to be careful about releasing these capabilities so that you know, people on social media are, are aware of when a video they see could be real or fake. And, you know, when a video that they see comes from a trusted source. Um, and we want to make sure that like these capabilities aren't used in a way that could perpetuate misinformation or something. Yeah, so there's a, a watermark in the bottom corner of um, Sora generated videos, which obviously is pretty important. But a watermark like that can be cropped. I'm curious if there are other ways that you guys think about being able to easily identify AI generated videos, especially with a tool like Sora? Yeah, so for Dolly 3, we trained uh, provenance classifiers that can tell if an image generated by the model um, or whether a given image was generated by the model or not. And we're working on adapting that technology to work for Sora videos as well. Um, so that won't be a complete. Yeah, that won't be a complete solution in and of itself, but it's kind of like a first step. Got it. Kind of like metadata or like a sort of embedded like flag so that if you play with that file, you know it's AI generated. Yeah, uh, C2PA does that. Um, but the classifier that we trained uh, can just be run on any image or video, and it tells you uh, if it thinks that uh, the, the media was generated by one of our models or not. Gotcha. Uh, what I'm also curious, what, what's your react? You obviously had to get to the point where Sora comes out and you think it's ready for the world to see what it's capable of. What's been your reaction to other people's reactions to Sora? There's a lot of, this is super cool. This is amazing. There's a lot of, oh my God, my job is in danger. How do you digest all of the way people react to this thing? Yeah. Um, I felt like a lot of the reception was like, Definitely, you know, some anxiety as, as to what's going to happen next. And we definitely feel that in terms of 
you know, our mission to make sure that this technology is deployed in a, in a safe way uh, and in a way that's responsible to all of the things people are already doing involving video generation. Um, but I also felt like a lot of opportunity. Uh, like right now, for example, um, if a person has an idea for a movie they want to produce, it can be really difficult to get funding to actually produce the movie. And because the budgets are so large, uh, you know, uh, production companies have to be aware of the risk associated with the investment that they make. Uh, and so one cool way that I think AI could help is if it drastically lowers the cost to go from idea to like a, a finished video. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of parallels with Dolly just in the way I feel like people are going to use it. Because when Dolly got really good, I started I mean, I can use it as a, a brainstorming tool. I can use it to sort of visualize a, a thumbnail for a video, for example. Um, and I could see a lot of the same tool like use being particularly awesome with uh, Sora. Um, I know you're not giving timelines, but you're in the testing phase now. Do you think it's going to be in a available for public use phase anytime soon? Not anytime soon, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess my last question is way down the road, way down into the future, when Sora is making five minute YouTube videos with sound and perfect photorealism, uh, what medium makes sense to, to dive into next? I mean, photos is one thing. Videos has this whole dimension with time and physics and all these new variables with reflections and sound. You guys are, you jumped into this faster than I thought. What, what is next on the horizon for AI generated media in general? So something I'm really excited for is how the use of AI tools evolves into creating completely new content. And I think that a lot of it will be us learning from how people use these tools to do new things. But often it's easy to think about how they could be used to create existing things, but I actually think they'll enable completely new types of content. And it's hard to know what that is until like it's in the hands of the most creative people, but really creative people when they have new tools do amazing things and they make new things that were not previously possible. That's really what motivates me a lot long term is like, how could this turn into completely new experiences in media that currently aren't capable, that currently we're not even thinking about? And hard to picture exactly what that is, but I think that will be like really exciting to just be pushing the creative boundaries and allowing really creative people to push those boundaries by making completely new tools. Yeah, it's super interesting. I feel like the the way, because I, I think in my video, I sort of mentioned like it's trained on existing content. So therefore it can only make things based on things that already exist. How so? You, the only way to get it to be creative is with your prompt. I imagine you have to get clever with the learning curves of prompt engineering and figuring out what to say to it. Is that accurate? There are other kinds of cool capabilities that the model has, sort of beyond just like text-based prompting. So, in our research post that we released with Sora, um, we had an example where we show blending between two input videos, and there was one really cool example of that where the video on the left starts out as a drone flying through the Colosseum. And on the right, it gradually transitions into like a butterfly swimming underwater. And there's a point in there where the Colosseum like gradually begins decaying and looking as if it's like covered in coral reefs and is partially underwater. And these kinds of, you know, generated videos really do kind of start to feel a bit new relative to what's been possible in the past with older forms of technology. And so we're excited about these kinds of things even beyond just prompting. Uh, as being new experiences that people can generate with technology like Sora. That is super In some cool. ways, we I... really see modeling reality as the first step to be able to transcend it. Whoa. <laughs> I like that. That's really, that is super interesting. Yeah, the better it is, yeah, the better it's able to to model reality, the, the faster you're able to sort of build on top of it. And ideally that that's able to unlock new creative possibilities as a tool and all kinds of other things. Super cool. Well, I guess I'll, I'll leave you, I'll leave it open to, if, is there anything else you want people to know? Obviously you guys have been working on this longer than anyone else has gotten to see what it does or play with it. What else do you want the world to know about Sora and OpenAI? 
I think another thing we're excited about is how learning from video data will make AI more useful a bit more broadly than just creating videos, because we live in a world where we see things kind of like a video that we're watching. And there's a lot of information about the world that's not in text. And while models like GPT are really intelligent and understand a lot about the world, there is information that they're missing when they don't see the visual world in a way similar to how we do. So one thing we're excited about for Sora and other AI models moving forward that build on top of Sora is that by learning from visual data about the world, they'll hopefully just have a better understanding of the world we live in and in the future be able to help us better just because they understand things better. That is super cool. I imagine there's a lot of computing and a lot of talented engineering that goes into that. So. I wish you guys the best of luck. I am so excited. I mean, eventually when I'm able to plug in more stuff into Sora, I'm very excited for that moment too. So uh, keep me posted. Will do. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Mark, guys. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yesterday, Rivian posted the R2 is two days away. And everyone was like, why didn't you just say it's R2 days away? <laughs> <laughs> Missed opportunity. Just call it, just call the title of the episode, Rivian's new cars, R Thoughts. Or just our thoughts on R2. Our thoughts on our R2. thoughts on R2. And R3. Damn. Podcast viewers <laughs> are watching us. Just come parentheses to this live. and R3. And R3. <laughs> <laughs> Double parentheses and R3X. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently Andrew is forcing <laughs> me to say like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. Um you should though.